Well, we're going to get into this message. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash a patient mother dot PDF. A patient mother. Amen. And how many of you need a little more patience as a mother? Amen. These 2021 Rugrats, you know, Bebe's kid used to be a movie. Now it's reality. Everybody got Bebe's kids. Whatever they're putting in that 5G has gotten these children. <laughs> Amen. Quit sleeping with your phone close to them. Amen. They're going crazy. Something. But so you got to have patience as a mother. Amen. Amen. And there's a way to handle them. Don't you let your kids get you out there. You know, your kids will get you out there because they're crazy. So they'll start saying stuff, doing stuff, whatever, then have you stepping out trying to defend them and they're crazy. And you need to deal with that at home. So don't you let your kid, I don't let my kids get me out there. Somebody say something, me and them going to talk. Amen. Because I know it's in the air. We all, what's the word? Susceptible. Amen. I ain't one of them folk. No, not my son. <laughs> no, let me go ask him. <laughs> and this conversation is over. Let me, I'm going to go deal with it. Amen. I don't put nothing past nobody born in this generation. Amen. Because everything is geared to make these kids crazy. Amen. Amen. And we know we want them saved and we want them living right. But they are kids. And sometimes something gets in their cereal. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it. It got in the cereal. It's your job to beat it out. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Beat it out. I don't care. Yeah. Beat it out. The Bible said beat it out. Yeah. Beat it out. Yeah. Amen. But you got to do your job, though. You can't just be having surprise beatings. There needs to be some rules first. You give them rules, and then if they disobey the rules, you punish them. Amen. And then when you know it's your fault, you sit them down and have a nice conversation with them and be transparent and say, hey, yeah, I may have missed it on this. Yeah, I know my decision may have hurt you. You know, let's work this out. You don't beat them because you did something. Man, why am I on this? But I know I'm preaching. I feel it. I don't know why I'm saying this stuff. Amen. But they, th that's what they, they need the rules. They need to abide by, abide by the rules. But you have rules too. We all got to abide by rules. Amen. Amen. And be understanding. But mothers, you have to be patient. Look at a mother and tell her, be patient, mother. Amen. Say it kindly, though. I said it nice. Just be patient. It's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. You just have to be patient. And we're going to talk about this. This is going to bless you, and it's not going to take me long at all. I promise you. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash a patient mother dot PDF. I'm telling you, my wife, this is the area where she shines the brightest. She is patient. She just waits. She just waits. She don't take stuff quickly. She just waits. And so... I appreciate that about her, because some things it just takes time. Amen? Amen. Dealing with a lot of folks, you got to take your time. Because folks are different. Folks come from different places, different backgrounds, different worlds, different mindsets, everything. You got to have a lot of patience when you're dealing with a smorgasbord of mentalities. Because everybody's not going to do it the way you think they ought to, or way, the way you think is best. That might be best for you because of the way you were raised and the way you grew up. That may not be best for a dysfunctional situation. That may not be best for a functional situation. So patience comes in because you wait. You're slow to speak. You're slow to react. Because you need to analyze it and say, is this something cultural? Is this something? We got mixed cultures in here. Is this something that they're just doing because they're different, raised different? Is this something? What is it? Be patient. I've already preached. 
Everybody stand. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Amen. But you got to be patient. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Which one is it? That's love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. I passed it. Oh. Long suffering is patience. Love, joy, peace, long suffering. Yeah, I know the King James ones. Long suffering is patience. Long suffering. But I like the way that sounds even better. Because when he acting a fool, you got to suffer long and trust God that it will get better. Amen. You don't leave him because when you leave him, you take you with you. And you're going to end up in the same position because you chose him. So that tells you what you like to choose. I just, I could end the message right now. Care about your looks? Don't you peer at me. Amen. You don't get up and leave. You, you suffer long. Because it's still you. And you're going to pick the same thing again. Because that's what you picked. Amen. So give God time. And don't act like you don't need time either. You need time. You need patience with yourself. Amen. And you pass a mirror and I'm ready to cuss yourself out. Looking at yourself disappointed. You need, you need patience with yourself. It's going to take you time to be that woman, that P31 woman. That takes time. To be that good wife, to be that good mother. To be a good girlfriend that leads up to marriage. That takes time, not in a relationship, but before you get in it. Amen. And don't be selecting no old jive something. <laughs> Turkey. <laughs> Takes patience. Amen. So we're going to go to this story. This is a very powerful story about a woman in the Bible that everybody talk about the P31 woman. This woman was way before that. She just pee. She was cold. This woman right here did almost everything right. And so that's why I want to highlight this story of Hannah because it's a very powerful story. First Samuel 1 and 4 tells us, and when the time was that Elkanah offered, which the you know, Jewish men were required to go offer a sacrifice, he gave to Peninnah, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters portions. So Elkanah had two wives, Hannah and Peninnah. So he was married. To Hannah, Hannah could not conceive, so he married Peninnah, his wife, and she had many sons and daughters. But unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion because he loved Hannah, so he didn't like leave her, he loved her. So he gave her a worthy portion. But the Lord had shut up her womb. Very significant. The Lord had shut up her womb. And I know, like, theologians like to say, well, this just means that the Lord allowed her womb to be shut up. He didn't really do it. Or whatever. The Bible said the Lord shut up her womb. Let God, look at somebody say, let God do what he want to do. <laughs> uh, and some things we just don't need to be trying to break down. We just need to read it and just let God do whatever he want to do. Because then when you start trying to make everything work with our our thought processes, then you start wondering, well, it's not fair that he chooses some and he doesn't choose others. And, you know, you get into all of that and God can do what, look at somebody say, God can do whatever he wants to do. So the Bible says that the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore. Just wouldn't leave her alone. Her adversary is Panama. She's making fun of her or she's, you know, throwing the kids in her face. Look at my sons and daughters, and you don't have nobody. So her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. That's the second time he said it. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, she, so she provoked her. So this woman did this every time they went up to the house of the Lord. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. Now, just think if that was some of you in here. And you were in this situation, and this woman was throwing them kids in your face. How would you react? <laughs> It'd be a whole nother testament. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because society has done a job on our modern women and have really taught y'all to fight any kind of situation like this. 
fight it. Fight. React. Fight. Tell them off. Tell the men off. Tell the husband off. Why you letting her do it? You letting her talk to me like that? I ain't got no kids and it ain't right. Just you to just ruin the Bible. You to mess this whole thing up. This chapter wouldn't have been in there. Somebody get mad at me reading it. Then you get mad for Hannah. Ooh, Hannah. Ooh, then she was doing you wrong. Ooh, she better be glad I wasn't there. I'd have had Hannah's back. You'd have messed the Bible up. Yeah, think about it. Yeah, this looked like something crazy. I mean, this is like, you know, this, she provoked her. So this is what she did when she got provoked. She wept and did not eat. So she fasted. She started fasting, pushing her plate away to become selfless so she wouldn't react to this woman. My, my. We need Hannah 2021. My, my, my. This woman. Hannah honored her husband by not attacking him for her lack of childbearing. Did y'all hear that? She honored her husband by not attacking him for her lack of childbearing. She didn't go off on him because she couldn't have a child. She didn't take it out on him. She didn't take it out on the family. She didn't take it out on herself. She never disrespected him in any way. Amen. You don't have to amen. It's still there. She, see, watch, watch, watch how it's still there. She never disrespected him. In any way, you can't make it disappear. She didn't disrespect this man because she could not conceive. First Peter 3 and 1 tells us, Likewise, ye wives be in subjection to whose husband? Your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by what? The conversation. The conversation of the wives. Yeah. So don't come telling me he won't act right. He ain't this, he ain't that. The Bible said if he don't obey the word, you can win him with your conversation. The way you talk about it. The way you bring it up. You can't yank the reins of the house from him and try to fix it. He's still the head of the house. Yeah, if you're in the right posture, the Bible says he can be won. You don't have to clap, it's still there. It's still there. It's still there. Even when she was being ridiculed and taunted by his other wife, she kept the what? Correct posture. And instead of lashing out and fighting him, what does she do? took her problem where? She took the problem to the Lord in prayer. Taunted by his other wife. In our situation, or in 2021, this other person might be your mother-in-law. Or his mama. Yeah. And when the mama is ridiculing and taunting you, she kept the correct posture, and instead of lashing out and fighting him, she took her problem to the Lord in prayer. First Peter 5 and 7 says, casting all your care upon him for he what? How much of your care are you supposed to cast on the Lord? All of it. That means that you shouldn't have any left if you cast it all on him. How much is all? All. So you cast it all on him. So whether it's your mother-in-law or his sister or somebody you know, because a lot of men now grow up without their fathers, and so they're heavily, you know, around a lot of estrogen growing up. When that mama picks up the slack, that sister picks up the slack. So when you marry them, you marry into that. 
And sometimes you feel like you got to draw that line. Oh, no, this is the line in the sand. You cross this. You don't have to do that. The Bible said take it to the Lord in prayer. As soon as I said that, somebody in here, but that don't work. <laughs> then you in the wrong religion. <laughs> you need to go worship Buddha or something and do some yoga. Because in here, we believe that prayer works. Amen. In Christianity, we believe that God still hears and answers our prayers. The problem is the way you going to God. You going to God after you got his skin under your fingernails. You done pinched his back. After you done went off, now you going to God. Oh, God, how did I get myself into this? <laughs> no, you got to go to God first. And I understand you women, it's emotional. So you have these triggers from all them childhood fights. <laughs> you have them triggers. Amen, I get it. You know, especially if you were in a youthful relationship, teenage relationship, broke your heart. That happened in your development. So that issue developed with you. Distrust developed with you. That's why I don't believe in no teenage relationships. Amen. And now I can't stop everybody from doing what everybody wants to do. Because it's a church and it's big. So some folk going to let their kids do whatever they want to do, and I can't, I can't do that. I, I, you'll hear me now, or you'll hear me later. But you're going to hear me. Amen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I need to say that again. You got to hear me now. Are you going to come to me later? But to guess what happened. I know what happened. It always happens. But I don't let kids mess up their development. That don't happen in their development because if you develop with that, then you grow up and have an issue. Then when a good man comes along and it's time, that issue comes up. Some of you, that issue have kept you single. I'm preaching here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because all you got to do is look at history. Back in history, they didn't let nobody date at that age. If you like somebody, you better have a job and be ready to take her on. You come in and ask her for no date. Then you have to date the whole family. But now people have a way to do it. They, be watch, they watch these reality shows and all that kind of stuff. So they, they know. Pastor don't know what he's talking about. You know, we're going to weep with It's going to work this time the way we say. You know, even though all the other stuff he preached done came true. It's right here. We got this. Okay. Okay. You go on over there and have that. Amen. But it's hard to get in the correct posture when you've been hurt. And it's happened in your development. It changes the way you posture yourself. You then begin to posture yourself protectively to protect yourself from something that's not even happening. That happened to you years ago and now you're still protective and defensive because you went through that and it changed it. So you got an innocent dude that's really ready and you blocking and dodging because of past stuff. Not even his fault. She gained an intimate relationship with God, listen to this, by having to pray for what? Peace in that situation, which gave her greater faith to believe God for the child. Oh, did you hear that? So, because there was an adversary that was messing with her, it caused her to go deeper into prayer, which when she went deeper into prayer, she believed God even more because she knew him more. She knew his capabilities more because she spent more time with him because the adversary drove her into prayer. 
Adversity will always put us on our knees and build our rapport with God. Amen. That's why some things happening. They're not happening just so you can just jump up. No, they're happening to put you on your knees. Because something else is getting ready to happen and you have to be prepared for it. There's something else God wants and you need to birth it. So adversity comes to posture you. She touched God because of her time spent with him in prayer and supplication. First Thessalonians 5 and 17 says what? Pray without what? Pray without ceasing. First Samuel 1 and 10. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow. See, this is what the adversity did. The adversity, God allowed that adversity so it could get this prayer right here. See, God wasn't looking for just a woman to have a child. God needed a woman to have a child for him. I will preach this message up in here. He needed to get this prayer out of her. So he allowed the adversity. She kept praying. Adversity kept coming. She went deeper and deeper till finally it broke loose. And she vowed a vow and said, O oh Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaiden and remember me and not forget thine handmaiden, but will give unto thy handmaiden a what? <laughs> I don't need no girl. I need a man child. See what adversity did? Adversity pushed her to bring the right thing. Israel didn't need a girl. Israel didn't need a female. Israel needed a priest because the priests that were active then was crazy. They was acting a fool. God needed a priest. So that adversity drove her down to pray this prayer. She said, if you would just give me a man child, I won't even keep him. I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And he's going to vow the Nazarite vow, meaning he's going to be dedicated to you. I'll go visit him from time to time, but he's all yours, God. But if there was no adversity, that prayer wouldn't have got prayed. Some of y'all are worried about the adversity, and you're not thinking about what the adversity is doing. It's building you up for the next thing that God is getting ready to do in your life. Hannah waited and prayed and believed it could happen. Even though it seemed he was not, what? Hearing, Hearing her. First Timothy 2 and 8. I will therefore that men do what? Pray every way. Pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands without what? See, if you fighting with the adversity and the adversary, you got wrath in your heart. And that wrath in your heart is going to do what? It's going to make you doubt. Because you're in the flesh. So Hannah waited, prayed, and believed it could happen. Even though it seemed he was not, God was not hearing her. So sometimes when you're praying to God, it feels like he's not hearing you. Because you're not getting the results. That just means that you have to go deep. Look at somebody say, go deeper. Go deeper. Ain't it funny how we go that deep for everything else in our life? When it's time for a job, you get turned down, you go find another way. On your job, you try to get the promotion, you apply again. When you get turned down, you wait a little while, you apply again. We do that with everything in our life. Stimulus check, you run into the mailbox barefoot. Just looking out the window. Out the curtain. Yeah, it looked like he put something in there a little different. That was a little different the way she, he, he did that. Run out there and check that mail. Yeah, everything. <laughs> you act. <laughs> but then when it come to God, you pray a prayer, you don't get an answer, you're done. Well, I guess it wasn't his will. Now you got to dig deep. Look at somebody and say, dig deeper. She waited. 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 Ain't it funny how you'll order something on Amazon that you need right now? 
and wait for it. You will wait. You need it right now. And you'll wait. Just on Amazon. Amazon get all the patience. But you can't wait on God. First Timothy 2 and 8. I will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without what? Wrath or doubting. God shut up her womb for a reason. The person to bring forth the greatest priest of the Lord had to diligently seek the Lord in what? Desperation. So that, so they could pray the priest here. So for Hannah to pray the priest here, we're talking about a spiritual battle. So God had to shut up her womb so she could spiritually prepare for what she was about to give birth to. What no ordinary child. This was the greatest priest that ever lived other than the high priest Jesus Christ. This is number two. Had to bring forth this great priest so she had to pray diligently so she couldn't just get pregnant willy nilly. But she had to get so desperate that she was willing to give the child up just to have it. So it could belong to God and change the world. The person to bring forth the greatest priest. Hebrews 11 and uh, uh, 6. But without faith it is what? Impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and he's a what? Of what? She diligently sought God. At first it was to have a child because she didn't have one. But she diligently sought God to the point to where now it ain't just to have one but it's to have one for God. Now I'm going to give this child to God because I got so close to him, my needs didn't matter anymore. My desire didn't matter anymore. The more time I spent with him, the more I wanted his will to be done. The better I knew him, the more I wanted what he wanted. How many of you know he's a rewarder of them that diligently seeking I feel like I'm preaching in here am I preaching Bria? Okay. it had to be a woman that would want it so badly that she would vow to give him back to God after he comes of age this is why Hannah had to pray and seek God diligently for the child Romans 8 and 28 and we know that how many things all things work together for good to them that what? And are called according to what? His purpose. Hannah was called according to his purpose. So it had to work out for good. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Now listen, this is important. Only her lips moved. So Hannah it got to the point to where don't nobody, don't, don't nobody even need to hear this. And this is also how respectful she was. Just imagine if she was praying loud about her husband not being able to, her, her not being able to conceive. She'd have made him start checking himself out. Now wait a minute, is it me? Is it my fault? So she kept it to herself, quiet, just you know, just moving her lips. But her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli, the priest at the time, thought she had been drunk. So he thought she was nibbling a little bit in the cooking sherry. You was supposed to be cooking. I don't see no lasagna. Half the bottle gone. Nipping. And Eli said unto her, the priest, how long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, and listen to the way she talked to him. Listen to the way she talked to her authority. No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I've poured out my soul before the Lord. She didn't say, what? Why do you think I'm drinking? I don't never drink. No, you didn't. Wait till I tell my husband. (laughs) 
2021. She said to him, count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial. I'm not a sinner. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Out of my grief am I speaking to you. Then Eli the priest answered and said, what? Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee what? Thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Can I keep preaching in here? It's going to get better. Mm. Hannah respected her spiritual authority. Oh, there was no Jezebel in her. She respected her spiritual authority. Even when the priest accused her of being drunk, she did not lash out or disrespect what? His spiritual authority. Proverbs 16 and 16, how much better is it to get wisdom than gold? To get understanding rather to be chosen than silver. Sometimes you just got to get an understanding and get some wisdom. Don't react. What you say? Drunk. See, you ain't no real prophet. If you was a real prophet, if you was a real priest, you'd have known what it was. Because Eli definitely got it wrong. It ain't what he thought. He was wrong. So she could have easily cited his wrongness and said, see, something wrong with Israel because of you. <laughs> oh, they do that kind of stuff now. Yeah, just take away his whole call. Because he errant. I'm preaching in here. Men of God error and get things wrong sometimes. But it does not negate the fact that God chose them. <laughs> when God decided to choose men, he knew he was going to choose men that sometime error. Eli sitting up there, his kids running amok. Crazy. These are the priests of Israel just acting a fool. Did God kill Eli? No. Because when Samuel heard God talking as a little kid, who did he go and ask? <laughs> so men get things wrong, but it does not negate the fact that God chose them. Romans 11 and 29, for the gifts and calling of God are what? Without, without repentance. Had Hannah lashed out, listen to this, against Eli for the accusation, he would have never blessed her for God to open her womb. Amen. Now think about that. This woman needs something from God. And the Bible said that he spoke it and said, let it be so. And God granted her what it was. God used the man he called and the woman he chose. And it all had to work together. But if she had got a stank attitude, well, God would have never chose her. But if she had got a stank attitude, she'd have closed up her womb herself. Because Eli's the one that's going to bless you for you to conceive. I'm preaching. See, folk don't know what they're doing. They don't know what, what's wrong with my life. What, what did you put your mouth on? God's word against his chosen one? Have you said something you shouldn't have said? Have you spoken something you shouldn't have spoken? Did you open up the gates and allow the devil in? And you wondering why you don't have it? Did you disrespect God's authority? I know I'm preaching. Y'all look like you want to look. It was the same man that got it wrong that spoke God's blessing on her to conceive. This is why we must be careful how we speak to God's men. Amen. For Samuel 26 and 9, and David said to Abishal, destroy him not. Abishal got a sword ready to kill Saul, King Saul. David said, destroy him not, 
For who can stretch forth his hand against God, against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? And folk wonder why they're on all these medications and all these heart palpitations and all this anxiety and depression and all of this singleness and can't get married. All of this jive turkiness and can't keep a job and can't take care of their family. They're wondering why all of these curses have surrounded them. And they don't remember back when they took the spear and threw it at God's man. You don't have to clap. We know how to stack chairs. <laughs> I told them, you know, they offered us that building next door. They were just going to cut some of it for us, whatever. I said, no, let's not do that. Let's just knock this wall down, make a little room. That way we can put the wall back if we need to. Because I'm going to keep preaching. And it's going to keep offending. Folk going to keep jawing. And Jezebel going to keep screeching. She going to keep tricking some of y'all. Because some of y'all just got to stay friends with her. She going to keep leading you out of here. So we don't, ain't no need of us moving nowhere. Because I ain't changing. Everything been in here the same since day one. Ain't nothing changed. But you might. Can I preach on that? Even if they offend us. Or make a mistaken judgment concerning us. Men do that. Your own mama did that one time. Whooped you and it was somebody else's fault. Anybody ever took, a, took one for the team? I got so many whoopings it was automatically my fault. My sister and them could do whatever they want to and I'm going to get whooped. I would just brace for it. My daddy would come home so mad he wouldn't even ask questions. Belt just slinging. Who was it? I know it was Craig. <laughs> Nobody got to tell me nothing. <laughs> Have to take one for the team every now and then. I thank God, you know, I've heard stories of where the kids just had to line up. When one got a whooping, all of them just had to get it because the belt was out and the arm was hot. When the arm is hot, it's like, the, like they say in the streets, the block is hot. When the block is hot, the whole block is hot. <laughs> now, I've heard stories. Our house, it wasn't really like that at our house, but I've heard. It just depending on how many kids was in there. You know, once it's more than four or five, it takes too long to get down to the bottom of stuff. <laughs> okay, now what? Y'all see, because he, and then he said, and who, 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 that ain't my son. That, what? He lived down the street. Why is he in it? You said it's too many. Just everybody just line up. Everybody line up. I'm the, I know I'm going to get the one that did it. Now I may get some others. But I'm going to get the one <laughs> that did it. <laughs> yeah, I've heard stories. That didn't really happen. Yeah. It was only three of us. So, and, and I was always, you know. So sometimes I would just say, it's me. I didn't do it, but I'm gonna do something. I already got something in my mind planned. So just go on, let me get it now. <laughs> but even if the man of God offend you or make a mistaken judgment concerning you, we must approach them with respect to who God has called them to be. Amen. Amen. Respect. That's the kind of church this is. It may not be the church for you. But that's the kind of church this is. We're going to respect the call. You know how long I've been doing this? You're going to respect that. You know how many videos I got out? You know how many hours I have studied just so you could have what God wants you to have? You're going to respect this. Or you're going to bounce. That's what you're going to do. That's what's going to happen. I don't care about what you think. Take that on out there. And we're going to be right in here. Amen. 
But this will ensure our blessing from them according to the will of God. So you get the blessing from the man of God according to the will of God when you approach them with respect and believe that they are the man of God. Amen. Hannah believed that Eli was the man of God. That's why she talked a certain way to him. And she believed that he could unlock the blessing she was looking for. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hebrews 13 and 7. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves. This ain't just to the mothers. Obey them that have what? Rule over you. Now I understand some of y'all grew up in the jungle. <laughs> and you don't know how to respect anyone or do anything anybody says. And no one should be able to tell you what to do. I understand that. I know that element is in our society now. But the Bible says, now if you in here, we're going to preach the Bible. If you in here, we're going to say what the word of the Lord says. And the word of the Lord says, obey them that have rule over you. You know why it says that? Because one day you're going to have rule over somebody. Yeah, one day you're going to have rule over somebody. And you're going to want somebody to obey your rule. Now, if you don't ever plan on having rule over nobody. And going to be a vagabond the rest of your life. Then that's you. But the Bible says, obey them that have rule over you, submit yourself. For they do what? They watch for your souls. Who watches for your soul? They that have rule over you. I mean, you think the Bible is playing? And you're not going to equate the way your life is right now with the way you've treated people that had rule over you? You're not going to put two and two together and see where you are right now. Why your prayers don't get answered. Why no blessings come your way. You discontent now because folks are being blessed and you're not. And you want to associate that with the rule that you won't follow? The Bible said they watch for your souls so that they must give an account and that they may do it with what? Joy, Joy and what? Not, Not grief. For that is what? It's bad for you when they have to do it with grief. Summary! <laughs> Hannah had what? Patience. She did not let her feelings spoil her home or her blessing. Can I say that again? She didn't let her personal feelings spoil her home or her blessing. She prayed and trusted God even though it looked hopeless. She did not give up hope. She prayed to herself and did not lose her submissive disposition. She desired to be a mother and she postured herself accordingly so that God would honor her and himself. You hear that? He didn't just honor her, but he honored himself. Because it was Samuel. Patience is required when you are believing God for things. Whether it's for a husband, a child, or healing in your body, a patient woman will always receive God's choice blessings when? When it's due. God heard Hannah. And she was granted her heart's desire because she was what? Patient. And she said, let thy handmaiden find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat and her countenance was what? No more sad. After Eli spoke that, no more sad. She knew then, okay, he done unlocked it. The, the, the God's man has spoken this blessing. And because God believes in order, and I followed the order, her countenance was lifted. I followed the order, and I'm good now. It's about to happen. It's about to go down. Come here, Elkanah. Let's do this. <laughs> and they rose up in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house in Ramah. And Elkanah said, Oh, Hannah. 
today, huh, you looking pretty good. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife. There's something different. Her countenance was lifted. The Bible said it. She was all, you know, she was kind of sorrowful and down. Now she just, come here, boy. Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife. And the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, she bare a son and called his name what? Samuel. One of the coldest people in the whole Bible. Samuel was the one. Remember, he the one rebuked Saul for acting a fool. He the one dealt with, he dealt with everybody that needed to be dealt with. Some of them, the Bible said, he cut into pieces. Went and got a gag and said, come here. And the Bible said, sliced and diced. He wasn't no ordinary priest. He meant business. Samuel. She named him Samuel because I have asked him of the Lord. We're going to skip down to 1 Samuel 2 and 17. The Bible is describing Eli's sons. Wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. Now this is why Samuel had to come. For men, for, uh, men abhorred the offering of the Lord. But Samuel, the little child, ministered before the Lord. Being a child, the Bible said he was a child. They had to make him a little bitty kid's ephod. He's a priest as a child. Wearing a linen e ephod. As a child. While these other men wilding out. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat. And brought it to him from year to year when she went to see him. Because remember, she gave him to the Lord. So he's living with the priest. His mother made him a little coat, brought it to him when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, the Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan. So look, it wasn't even over. She had the son and she gave the son to the Lord. So guess what the priest did? Now it's that same priest that she could have went off on but chose to respect his authority. He's still working. He's still there. Wasn't no bad blood, because she did right by him. Now she's coming to him just to bring her son a little coat. <laughs> I like that analogy, just a little coat. <laughs> and Eli looked at her and said, oh, the Lord give thee seed, because you loaned us this baby boy, and he's going to one day lead all of us. So for that loan, that you lent to the Lord. God give thee seed. And they went, on, went home. And the Lord visited Hannah. So that she conceived and bared how many? Three, Three sons and Three. two daughters. <laughs> See some of y'all would have stopped at the first child. And kept him and said well no. This is mine. No, oh, you promise that to the Lord. If you give that to the Lord, he's going to give you exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Everyone stand to your feet. Amen. Oh. You got to have patience and you got to wait on the Lord. But while you're waiting, you got to do things right. You got to respect spiritual authority. You got to honor those that God has called because they're trying to help you get what you're trying to get. They're trying to get you there. How are you going to pray for it and then kick down everybody that is capable of getting you there? They're capable of helping you to reach that place. And those are the ones. You're bad mouthing. I thank God I didn't do that. I knew God showed me where I had to go. He showed me who I had to be. And I made sure there was key people that I treated right. 
because I knew I would need them. So you got to have patience and you got to have honor for God's folks. And as a mother, especially a wife, you got to do right by your husband. I know they don't teach that on The View. I'm trying to figure out why folks love watching stuff that goes against everything God says. I don't understand why that's your favorite show and everything about it is pagan and they're teaching you how to make your husband mad. They're teaching you how to break up your home like all of theirs is broken up. They're teaching you how to ruin your children like all of their kids are ruined. I had somebody uh, mess me up there because you know in the um, part eight of the Truth Behind Hip Hop, I was talking about Sade. Well, I mean that music, you know, me and my husband, oh, keep listening to Sade. Keep on, I told you she had a song, a worship song to Lucifer called Songbird to the devil and her daughter is living her life as a man that's why all her stuff is depressing and sad because her daughter has turned herself completely full surgery trans everything into a man that's, that's, that's what you and your husband want to play at night you want that spirit in your house really you think your kids are going to be okay? Hers wasn't. See, folk don't want to, they don't want to hear this. They don't, truth behind hip hop, they just, oh, yeah, yeah, no. okay. Oh, do it your way. Do it your way. And ignore the news and ignore everything else that's confirming all them videos. Just ignore it, Black, and you ain't seeing none of it. Because that's your life. Choose your life. But if you want to receive from God, you got to do it his way. If you really want to be blessed of God, you got to do it his way. Everyone bow your heads. Mothers! I'm, I'm talking to the mothers now. If you need patience, just come on up here. We're going to just kneel down on these steps. I need some patience. I need more patience. This story about Hannah has inspired me. This story has inspired me. Just kneel down. Come on, ladies. Yeah. Come on, mothers. All of you. Come on. Amen. I'm inspired. Remember that old song? I'm encouraged to walk with Jesus all the way. I'm inspired by this woman, Hannah. Her story is in the Bible for a reason. To inspire you. We are just trying to live our best life. Just trying to do things the right way. So we need these examples because sometimes baby daddy get trifling. Sometimes husband get trifling. And I know it's 2021. It's something in the air. Every time the 5G connect to your phone, somebody just went crazy. <laughs> That's just the time we're living in. But we want the spirit of the Lord to manifest in our lives. You're no different than Hannah. You're no different than she is. I don't care where you are right now. You're no different. You can turn your life around right now. This prayer right here can turn your life around and you can exemplify who this woman was and what she did to get the blessing. One of the greatest blessings in Israel's history came out of this woman because she dared to not react the way other women would have reacted. And that's all you have to do. Put yourself in that place. And we're going to pray and believe God with you. Father God, all of these precious, wonderful women, Lord, these mothers that you have brought here to ABC that are kneeling, God, believing the message that they heard, believing the authority that it was given by, believing the truth of it, and believing that because it's written in your word, God, it has to be so. And we believe, Father God, that Hannah was able to do these things because she sought you. She prayed to you. She believed, and most importantly, she waited on you. So give us that patience, Lord. All over the building, all over the world, everyone that's hearing this message, grant us with that patience, Lord, that fruit, that significant fruit of your spirit. Grant it, Lord, so that we won't get in a hurry, so that we won't have to show it and be showy and show off and 
try to uh, 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 impress people. But we can wait for you to do things decently and in order. And most importantly, God, we can obey your authority. Humbly submit ourselves. No matter what we've gone through. No matter what these ladies have gone through. No matter what man talked bad to them. No matter what man treated them badly. That's not all men and it's not you, God. So they will not take out what happened to them on you. But Father God, just deliver their hearts. Deliver their hearts and their minds. Take the weight off so that they can wait on you patiently, Father God. And right now, with the authority you've given me as the head and in charge of this house, as the priest and angel of this house, I rebuke the spirit of Jezebel right now. Father God, that foul, wicked, witch spirit, I speak it right now, it will not take root at ABC. It won't live in this church. I come against that spirit right now in the name of Jesus with the power of God. You will not be in here. You will not hurt marriages. You will not tear apart relationships. You will not speak evil of leadership. You will not sow discord. You will not start seditions. You will not in the name of Jesus. I speak it right now. You will not grow roots in here. You won't come through adults. You won't come through teenagers. I speak it off of teenagers. Busybody teenagers. It won't happen at ABC. We speak against this foul spirit because this is a place, this is a haven of peace in a time where our world is in turmoil. This is a place of peace. This is a place where peace will dwell. This is a place where forgiveness will dwell. This is a place where we will love our brothers and sisters as we love ourselves. We will lay down our lives for our neighbors as we love ourselves. Father God, this is a place, Lord, where we will dwell in peace together. So I pray these choice blessings on every mother that came up. No more worry. Don't worry about it. God's got you. Don't fret about it. God has you. Trust and believe, and Lord, draw them closer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, hug one of your sisters. And tell them, God has done it for me. I will be patient. Come on, look at them and say, I'm going to be patient with you. And my husband. And my baby's daddy. And whoever else. My children, my son. My banker. Patience. In the name of Jesus, come on, give God praise. All over the building. We give glory and honor to God in here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, Elder. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Patience.